I'd like to welcome you today to our first uh, weekly Wednesday night devotional. I uh, pray all is well with you and your family uh, during this time. Been praying for you and we love you. And uh, since we can't uh, meet together for Wednesday night service, we're bringing Wednesday night service to you in a way with this devotional. Uh, I'd like to share a word I believe will encourage you. It encourages me. It's one of my favorite passages. And so uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, I'd like you to get it out. Obviously, we don't have the slide show like we normally do to show you the scriptures. So if you'll get your Bibles and uh, turn to Psalms 91, uh, we're going to focus on three particular scriptures there. We'll be just referring to a few others in that passage, but mainly Psalms 91, 14 through 16. And then if you'd flip over in the New Testament to Romans 8, 28, Kind of put your little paper or marker there because we'll be flipping back to that and looking at a little comparison to, to those two particular passages. But I pray that this devotional time will be an encouragement to you and your family. And so uh, let's be able to look now. Let's uh, look at that passage uh, in Psalms 91. Uh, first of all, let's before we look at our key passage, 14 through 16, let's look at a kind of what's going on in the beginning of that uh, chapter. Uh, we can see in, in verse 2, uh, he says, the Lord is his refuge. In verse 3, he talks about the Lord being the one who delivers from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. In verse 4, he talks about seeking refuge. In verse 5, he talks about not being afraid of the terror by night and the arrow that flies by day. In verse 6, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, and, in, and of the destruction that lays waste at noon. And then verse 9, he talks about the Lord again being his refuge. Uh, this describes a, a very difficult, chaotic, situation that the nation him, himself are going through, and words like terror and pestilence and destruction, finding refuge. Uh, this is a difficult situation as we can relate maybe to many of these things as our, our world is, is experiencing these, uh, this virus. We look at these times that the psalmist mentions here, and uh, maybe we can gain, as we look at this passage, some some strength and encouragement for what he saw in this. And obviously the Lord is our refuge. That's who we go to and we don't have to fear, as he mentioned, that the Lord's going to take care of us. But I thought it's very interesting how he wraps up this passage in the last three verses that I, I think are really important for us uh, to look at. Even though we, we know that God's our refuge, he's the one who'll take care of us. He's the one we run to for every refuge. But let's look as we uh, focus on those three verses. In Psalms 91, 14, it says, Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With, long, with a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. Oh, what a beautiful wrap-up to that passage. You know, look at all those benefits that come to the one who loves God and sets his focus on loving God. And let me just recap those benefits He'll deliver him. He'll set him securely on high. He'll answer his prayer. He'll be with him in trouble. He'll rescue him. He'll honor him. And he'll satisfy him with long life. Boy, that's a package there that we could all long for. All those benefits. And he states right up front why that person's getting those benefits. You know, in most of our English sentences, we we put the because in the middle of the sentence or the middle of the statement uh, when, we, when we mention something. Uh, we may tell somebody, you know, I'm going to get you a gift and I'd love to take you out to eat because you were such a benefit 
to helping me finish that project. You know, the because many times fits in the middle, but I believe the emphasis on this passage, he puts the because at the very beginning to let, let that person know because you've loved me, then he lists all the benefits. All those benefits that came to that person in the midst of very difficult and trying circumstances. And I believe for us, as we go through difficulty, we set our focus on the Lord, our refuge, our help. He, we've already seen how much he's helped us, not only in the last days and months, but all throughout our life, we can see how the Lord has been there for us. And we set our love and our affections on him for all that he's done for us, not only in salvation, but in everything else he's give, given us in life. He sets that way for us. And, and the key is that loving relationship. You know, we can get, and we are involved in, in the disciplines of the faith, prayer and Bible study and Bible reading, serving the Lord, ministry, and those are all important. But our main motivation and focus has always has to be the love of the Lord. That's our motivation. We can never lose that. Many times difficult situations begin to have us refocus on what matters most in life and what matters most in our spiritual walk. And that is making sure our love for the Lord is a primary focus in our life. And that's the key here. And a lot of people in relationships, a lot of spouses who may have the big house and the big cars and fancy vacations and a lot of money, most of those spouses would trade that in for a love relationship at home. And so having things and blessings are great, but having the love relationship with the Father is the greatest. So I asked you about keeping your other marker there in Romans. So if you'll flip over to that, Romans 8, 28, most of you have that memorized. We'll look at that passage as well and see one particular similarity in that passage as well. Romans 8, 28, for we know that God causes all things to work together for good. And who is that to? For good to those who love God, comma, to those who are called according to his purpose. You see, there it is too. A lot of people will quote that verse. Hey, Pastor Tim, all things work together for good. And that's true. That's the first part. But the second part gives the ones who it's addressed to. To those who love God. To those who are called according to his purpose. Just like he started out in Psalms 91. Because you love me. And lists the benefits. Here he lists the benefits. All things working together for good. To those who love God to those that are called according to his purpose because that's so important. You know, that Greek word that means working together in that passage is the Greek word synergio, which is where we get the English word synergism, which has to do with uh, various elements, obviously more than one, that come together and accomplish something greater or in some instances, something totally different than those two elements can accomplish separately. Uh, we see that in science. You know, you take a poisonous element of uh, sodium, you take a poisonous element of chlorine, for somehow, well, I'm not a scientist, that can, can come together, and we call those two elements together table salt. And table salt's a good thing, boy, especially on French fries, man. Who doesn't want salt on their fries that make the fries oh much better? So we take two negative elements and through synergism, they come together and accomplish something far greater, obviously, than the poisons they can be to accomplish something that we use and benefit and like. You know, we see in that that God can take all things in our life, good or bad, and work them together for good. 
On my birthday, I, I usually asked for a particular dessert called Neiman Marcus Squares. But one thing about Neiman Marcus Squares, almost everything in them I don't like. I don't like raw egg. I, I don't just like salt by itself. I don't like dry baking powder. I don't like dry cake mix. You know, I don't like coconut by itself. And so all the things that are in it individually, I don't like. But when Rebecca takes all those ingredients and works them together for good and mixes them up and works them together into one batter and then takes that batter and, and puts them in a pan and puts them in a hot oven for the right temperature and the right length of time in that hot temperature, oh, they come out together for good. And boy, can I enjoy, I could eat the whole pan because they work together with so much good. All those ingredients separately that I don't like, when they're worked together, they come out for good. In a hot oven at the end, but never too hot an oven, and never a minute longer than the recipe calls for from the chef that wrote the recipe. God will never keep us in the oven hotter than it should be, are longer than it should be according to his will and his purpose. He loves us and will work things together for good to those who love God. That's our focus, is our love. As we go through difficult and trying times, those trying times, I believe, should always focus on the love of the Lord. You know, when Rebecca and I were dating, uh, of course, we grew up in the same neighborhood. We're about four, five, six blocks apart from where my family lived and where her family lived. We went to elementary, junior high, and high school together. And, uh, and when one day she called me, that's before cell phones, and told me somebody must be breaking in the house. I heard the window and please come help me. Well, I grabbed my gun I ran out of the house, jumped in my truck, and ran over to her house as fast as I could, barged through the door, ran in. There I was with my gun, ready to go, kind of like Rambo, but without all the muscles. And there she was, just in a panic mode, and I checked out the window and checked out the house, went around the house, and I don't know if it was a cat or some animal hit the window or whatever, but there was no burglar, there was no break-in. But there I was as the hero. Our love relationship even drew closer. There she drew and needed me in that moment of crisis. And I think that's how it is with the Lord when we go through difficult times. Uh, we need him, of course we need him all the time, but in those difficult situations, our love relationship draws closer. We see even the greater need and the love we have for him as he is our refuge. Uh, I could only do so much through my resources or lack thereof for Rebecca. I did it because I loved her and wanted to be their protector, but God's not limited in all his resources and what he can do to protect us and be our refuge. And even in the midst of that, draw us to even a closer love relationship with him because we're just running to him and needing him so much. You know, we see that in the church of Ephesus. If you read Romans, I mean, Revelations chapter 2, uh, when he wrote to the church at Ephesus, they had a lot of good things going on that they were doing as a church. But he found the one negative thing, and that there was they left their first love. That's what they did wrong. They, they just, through all that was going on, maybe good or bad, they, their love relationship had drifted and they had to be drawn back to that. You know, that's what we need to do. Whether it's good times or bad times, we focus on the Lord. How good he has, he has been and is to us and how much closer we should be to him. I, I was reading about Henrietta Mears. Many of you are familiar with her. She was born in the late 1800s and uh, just a great woman of God that did so much. She was the founder of the National Sunday School Association. Uh, she was the uh, uh, director of education for a, a large church there in uh, Hollywood, California. Uh, she was the founder of Gospel Light Publishing. 
Uh, she lectured, she wrote books, uh, she trained people to be able to teach the Word of God to others. She had such a great impact in Christianity that's still going on today, probably the, the legacy that she, lived, that she left. And an uh, editor of a uh, Christian magazine, uh, his name was Russell Hitt, he wrote that he got the opportunity and privilege to be able to have a meal, a sit-down meal with her at, at one of the conventions she was at. And she began in their conversation there at, the, at that table, reflecting on all that, that God had done for her. And in the midst of just sharing what Christ had done for her, she just began to have tears rolling down her face. This person that was famous, well-known, had done so much, he felt so honored to be with was there weeping, just reflecting on her love relationship with Christ. And he made this statement. He said, it's thrilling to see a Christian worker who's not become a pro. <laughs> you know, we can kind of just go through life and see that we're growing in Christ and doing all these things, but how's our love relationship with the Lord? I encourage you that even in these difficult moments and times, trying times, times where we, we don't know, the future, but we know who holds the future, and that's Christ, the one we love. And I'm encouraged that during these difficult moments, we can, in times, we can draw our love to Christ even more. Psalms 91, because he's loved me, and he lists the benefits. In Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, those that love God. And the book, and then in Revelations with that church of Ephesus, leaving their first love. Hey, we're, we're going to keep focusing on loving Christ, loving each other. Praise the Lord that we do not only have our love relationship with Christ, but praise the Lord that God's given us such a loving and caring church like he's done. That loves God, that loves people, and wants to reach our world. And I, I hope that you've been encouraged by these words that the psalmist in Psalm 91 shared about how he had his refuge in the Lord and how all those benefits were his and the benefits in Romans. And so I encourage you and challenge you to keep your love relationship with Christ growing. Continue to reflect upon the goodness of God. Continue to reflect on him being your refuge him being your place that you can run to in times like this. I love you, and our church loves you. We're here to minister to you in any way we can. And please don't hesitate to ask if there's a way we can reach out to you more than even just this devotional. Please let us know. Let me have a word of prayer for you and even our nation at this time. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you. We thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. We thank you for these benefits that we see in your word that are ours. And God, may we just continue to grow closer to you. May our love relationship continue to grow in you. May we just fall in love with you in a greater and a deeper level as we make you our refuge in these trying times. And even in good times, Lord, we need you just the same either way. Father, I pray for each and every member of our church, God, that you would reach out, Lord God, and touch those that are part of our fellowship, Lord God, that, that attend, and, and Lord, uh, that you would just bless them and minister to them, Lord, and, and those that are, that are part of other churches, of the body of Christ, that you'd bless them, and Lord, even our nation, Lord God, as a whole, and our world, Father God, continue to reach out and, and touch, Lord, people, heal people, protect us, Lord, uh, God, that you'd end this virus quickly, Lord. And God, continue to give wisdom and direction to those that are in leadership, Lord, God. And, and may all of this draw people, Lord, to come to know you as their personal Lord and Savior and come to draw closer to you, those who know you. God, we pray that you'd meet each and every need in our fellowship, Lord. You'd use our church not only to meet needs here around us, but those around our community, Lord, as we reach out to minister to them. We thank you for your word and your encouragement to us through your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.